if you don't want to live forever and you don't want to add 10, 20, 30, even 40 yeah, you don't care. years to your life, AI is here to help. Which what? AI is getting into everything. This is the craziest thing I have ever seen that I want to share with you. So there is a, a, a whole category called grief tech. Right. And you've seen some of it with like the holograms, right? Ronnie James Dio. Or um, who was the other big one? There's a oh, Tupac. Well, there's a lot of those. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of grief tech, but more geared towards fans. Mm-hmm. I mean, you probably wouldn't have a hologram at your house, but you could have a chat bot at your house that replaces your loved one when they're gone, your loved no. one when they're gone, as people explore new ways to keep loved ones alive. I mean, I might want to do that for my cat, maybe. Little cat, rest in peace. But I don't know about people. This is actually kind of disturbing. So how does this work? Well, this guy, James Vlahos, created this chatbot replica of his father after he died from terminal lung cancer. And he spent a year programming this chatbot. And he, he prepped it by talking to his dad over all this time and interviewing his dad about all these things, just all about his life. So he was sort of preparing for this. He was preparing. I don't know if he was thinking this was going to be the end result, but it's been so popular. There was even a story about it in Wired that he created this Hereafter AI. Here's a little bit. This is their commercial or their intro video. This is not a joke, by the way. This is 100% Real. What if there was one place where all of your memories could live forever? One place where you could ask any question about the life of someone you love and always hear their voice. Introducing Hereafter AI, the amazing new way to save and share memories about your life. First, you record memories with the help of a friendly automated interviewer. Hi, I'm James. What's something unusual about your childhood? When I was growing up, my dad was a preacher, and we moved around a great deal. Got it. I'll save that memory. Pick the topic yourself or get an inspiring suggestion. You can also upload photos to go with your stories. Then, using the power of our AI platform, your loved ones can chat with the virtual you today or years in the future. This sounds like right out of Black Mirror. I'm so conflicted by this. I do know that people, you know, when they have a loved one that they know is, is you know, sick and not doing well and that they're eventually going to pass away, you do start asking questions just so that you can keep a log of everything. But this goes to the next level with AI. I, I am really conflicted by this. You know, those movies that people make, you know, they put together yes. like a celebration yes. video or whatever, like, like you would your wedding. You would go back and you would watch it, have a good feeling. But mm-hmm. is it... Is there concern for, like, the grief process? How are you supposed to let go? That's That was my question, you know, with with being conflicted by this, is that you really should, just for your own mental health, go through the grief process. But some people might be saying, well, this is going to help. I don't know. But also, what about the validity or the accuracy of responses. So for example, what if you did this for with whoever and then they passed away and then you right. pass this on generations and the person that wasn't even alive when this happened is asking this chatbot about, you know, their grandpa questions and he may not be answering the right thing. So now you're kind of polluting your family tree. Right, that how accurate is it really is what you're saying. Yeah, it's it's. I don't even think I'm torn on it. I think this is a horrible idea. Because I think people are saying this could be great for your, your comfort level. But again, I'm thinking that people like grief counselors are worried about how this really helps you process all of your emotions. Um, and now you're making money off people, too. I don't know. Again, I'm really conflicted by this. And of course, it all goes back to A.I., well, here's a little clip of dude talking to his grandpa. This is actually the passed away grandfather Ooh. having the conversation with the person via the bot. Hey, grandpa. Hello. What part of my life would you like to hear about now? Tell me something that I don't know about you. Sure. 
One time I played basketball against the Harlem Globetrotters, and I scored a three-pointer. That's crazy. I guess that is kind of a strange story when you think about it. Tell me something else surprising about you. There was a time that I was the pilot of a competition biplane and did barrel rolls and loops. I just don't like this at all. Can't you just film yourself? I mean, can't you just get a video camera or your iPhone and do a video yourself of your loved one and interview them that way? And just keep it as as a, well, that'd be more accurate, at least. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. Are, are, how do you handle death? I mean, do you do you shut down? I I have not had a ton of people in my life pass away. I know it's inevitable, obviously. So death definitely is scary to me. It's uh, it was very hard for me. You know, my mother. I lost my mother in two thousand three, and I know you remember that. Yes. And we, you know, my best friend. We talked five times a day, but she had been sick for two to three years, and I felt like that entire time I was mourning what was about to happen so i did things like sit and talk to her and say you know like ask her questions talk about her childhood that helped me but you never honestly you never get over it and then i lost my dad in 2007 it's uh i think everyone handles it differently for me i try to remember all the good things and like i said i talked to them and i took notes i would never use ai i'm sorry were you visited after their passings by either one of them uh, as uh, i'll say ghost for lack of a better uh, as a spirit no but i still have dreams like they're still in my dreams and then i wake up and i feel sad about it but then i'm like but yeah but they were in my dream and i should feel happy about it how how does it make you feel when you see like and this is not grief tech obviously but your mom is in our archives and your mom was very funny when she was on our yes. show this many years later when you hear like rock leslie's mom and she's on it's tough is i it? hear it and I'm, I'm happy because she was very by the way she was very funny and i have funny stories about her because she was you know very unfiltered she would say funny things all the time unfiltered and i hear it and it makes me smile but it also it's you know Still a little tinge of sadness. Right, it yes. takes you there in your mind. Well, I yes. think this hereafter AI is the name of it would be a very bad thing for people to because you're relying on a chat bot. Anyway, if that's something that does interest you, you can look it up. It's called Hereafter AI. Barnes, I have so many friends that are dealing with aging parents. I would love to know what our listeners think about this. Either way, if you're for it or against it, you know, chime in four seven zero. Seven four one four nine nine nine. Let us know what you think about this. I'm with you. I'm dealing with my dad turns eighty this fall. Yeah, it's a tough situation. It is. Yeah. What is your take on this? Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Four seven zero seven four one four nine nine nine. Let us know what you think. Barnes and Leslie, man, what a hot topic that we unloaded there. So the calls are piling in. We're talking about hereafter AI, which is this company. That dude made so you can talk to grandpa later or whatever loved one later when they're passed at your leisure like a chat bot. I'm so conflicted by this as well because, you know, maybe it's closure for some people. But for me, it's like, do you ever really get through the grieving process? Yeah, I'm not conflicted at all. I think it's a horrible idea. I think it's that's just we don't need that at all. 470-741. Four nine nine nine. Hey, Morning X, who is this? Hey, this is Nikki. Hey, Nikki. Nikki, where do you stand on this whole hereafter AI thing? Are you for it or against it? Hell no. Okay, good. You go, Nikki. Against it. Not a bit. I don't think so, man. It's too much. It's irresponsible. It's so irresponsible on so many levels. And I don't know why this guy decided to make it into a business, but I wonder how long it will exist. Well, I think that he needs to go get kicked in the balls immediately. That's what needs to happen. There you go. (laughs) I love it. She's an OBS artist. Nikki, I do have to ask you something, though. What about, you know, when people go and they see a psychic or something because they're wanting messages because there is no closure? Do you think it's good for those people? I think that they need to heal. I think that grieving is a big part of healing. I don't think that that psychics, I don't think that they feel you know better after do they do they really feel better if they're like oh i heard i, I, I told you to i don't i don't think so not my not my experience with grief grief can do 
just awful things to us, just like stress. Like it can rewire our brains, right? Leaving us in a mental state that's like foggy. We can't make great decisions. We feel spacey. We're forgetful. Right. And this would prolong that. I mean, what Leslie's saying, I think those are people who kind of are fantasizing about it. I don't know about directly interacting like with, you know, like with mediums or something. But this is taking it to a craziness level. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, I agree with you, Nikki. I was just trying to look at both sides of the story here. And it's just it's so weird to me. But I'm with Nikki. I'm with Nikki. Where do you listen, Nikki? What part of town you in? I'm in Lawrenceville. All right, Elville. We love you. Thanks for calling. (laughs) Thank you. All right, thanks. We'll see you, Nikki. Yeah, it's just, I mean, having a chat bot Nikki. where you can just, like, talk to your dead relative or whoever is just a little spaced out. Hey, Morning X, who is this? This is uh, Mark David calling from Montreal. Hey, Canada? Mark David, what do you... Hold on, Canada? Yes, sir, Canada. I didn't think there was a Montreal, Georgia. Damn straight, we're international, Fram. Look at that. I'm impressed. Yeah. Are you listening on the app or streaming? What are you doing? I, I usually stream you guys online. Thank you so much. Where do you stand on all of this? I'm not against AI in general. I use it for work. It actually helps me do my work faster. But in terms of using it to sort of like recreate a deceased relative, that I'm not 100% sure about. I mean, it's coming from a good place, but honestly, it creeps me out a bit. You know, I think the best way to remember a uh, departed relative, at least in my opinion, is through photos, through videos, uh, anything else you might have, but to sort of recreate them, I don't think that's right. In fact, the next time I want to speak to any of my departed relatives, probably when I reach the afterlife myself. Yeah, what you said, you're talking about accuracy, really. You're talking about videos that are authentic and real. You're talking about photos that were a, a snapshot in time, not taking yeah. those elements and regurgitating probably a bunch of misleading information, if anything. It's just not for, for I'm thinking about I'm thinking about generations to come. Like when it, you know, when everyone's gone from this generation, two generations from now, some dude digs up your time capsule with grandpa in there talking, you know, in his chat bot. That's just weird. You want something authentic that you actually did yourself. Exactly. It is very weird. And uh, it doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel authentic. Like I have yeah. many memories of talking to my, you know, departed relatives over the years. And, you know, I remember them often. I have a picture of my grandparents on my desk. But to talk to them through a chatbot, I don't know. That that just that just sounds creepy. Like I said, yeah. No, this was and this was covered in a um, a Black Mirror episode. A lot of people have referenced that online. Obviously, the topic. I mean, the topics they get into on that show are way out there, and this is one of them. But we appreciate you listening in Montreal. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Proud to represent Canada. Yes, sir. You're the. I see those Love Canadian it. listens pop up. I'm like, who is that guy? It's me. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. Thanks. Hey, good morning. Who's this? Good morning. This is Chris. What's up, Chris? Hello, Chris. Where are you calling from? Hey, how are you? I'm in Loganville. Where do you sit on this whole issue of this hereafter AI bringing people back via chatbot once they're gone? I just, I, I don't, uh, want, I have memories and pictures of loved ones. And once they pass, I just, you know, I, I know it can be probably comforting to some people to want to keep them around in some way, shape, or form, you know, by visual means. But, you know, I, they're, they're gone. They're not here anymore. And I would rather just, you know, let them go um, and hang on to the memories and the pictures and let it go at that. But to each their own, you know, I mean, I don't, if it cut, gives someone else comfort, then. Sure, you know I can I can understand it. That's that's them and and I'm me. That's it. That's interesting. Your take is we haven't had one person yet who is for it. I'm still wondering if there will be one, but you're not as aggressively against it as say Nikki, who called in. But I, I I'm probably leaning on the aggressive side. I don't think it's a necessary thing. But that's just again that's just my opinion. I think it's just too it's too weird. It's just not it, it doesn't help anything. It is very weird. and Because yeah, you're prolonging the grief for whoever it is that's trying to cope with it. It's like you're giving them a drug. It, it, exactly. Fake alive. Exactly. And Chris, you sound really reasonable, and we, we appreciate your thought on this because, again, we haven't had one person that is for this. Yeah. Thank you for the call, Chris. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you. It was nice to talk to you guys. Thank you. You as well. Have a great day. You too. 
Good morning. Who's this? Timothy. Uh, where are you calling from? Douglasville. So what's your take on this AI bringing back the dead? Yeah. Not for me. Um, I can see where it would have limited um, benefit in the beginning, but, you know, my parents both lived into their 90s, and they lived at home until the very end, and so there's nothing left to say. Um, and, you know, we, we've dealt with it um, accordingly, and... Um, but just because it's not for me or my family doesn't mean that it's not right for somebody else. I, there's just a huge potential for misuse. <sighs> I don't know. It's just a slippery slope. He's bringing up a good point, though, too, Barnes. Maybe it's one of those gone too soon or something unexpected where, you know, you were just taken by surprise. I don't know. Maybe that's going to help some people with the grieving process. Right. If, if they had something that they needed to process and, and bring closure under a controlled environment, absolutely. And they're already doing things where they're limiting what it can say. It can it can regurgitate, maybe not the best word. You can you can reprocess information that has already been mm-hmm. said and already been written. Right. But it will right. prevent you it will prevent that um, AI voice to come up with something new or make new suggestions based on <laughs> who knows. And plus there's the consent thing. It, it's you know, my parents, I, I didn't say, well, hey, we're going to do this and we want to use your voice and we want to do all that. No, I wouldn't. I would never do that with with anybody without, you know, making sure they understood what was going on. Sure. But but you said something very key. I think that hit the nail on the head a little bit. Whatever it was, it's already been said. Yes. Y- you know what I mean? Like you've had a relationship with this person and you had the opportunity to engage with them on everything from religion to the afterlife to who's your favorite band. Like, you treasure those memories and and it's over and it's a, 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 an evolution that happens and we're all going to die someday and you move on. Exactly. It is best to, for those who can do it seamlessly or, you know, effectively to, to, to accept it and move on. And some, te- some people takes longer than others. Uh, yeah. to, to get through it. And some people, some few people carry it for a long, long time. If they felt that like a child or whatever was taken yeah. suddenly and there's no, it was like, wait, right. uh, I want to go back and make this right. That's, you're going to be, uh, Beating you know. yourself up. Yeah. Hey, thank you for calling. We appreciate it. Great. Great to talk to you guys. I mean, I feel like 1996 again. Hey, baby, we're going to do the Olympics again. Let's start all over. There you go. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. We'll see you later. Yep. Bye-bye. You know, Barnes, it makes you really think like you need to have those conversations. No, I know. With your loved ones while they are alive. Hey, Morning X, who is this? Hey, this is Mike. Where do you fall on this? Yeah. Um, So I think I would would like it in the future, but I don't know that it would work currently. Um, I had a... My mom passed away in May. But she sorry. didn't live her li- oh, so thank sorry. you. Um, but she didn't live her life very much online. So, you know, if I was reading an AI chat based on her text, all it would say is like, "Okay, great." Um, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, whereas my kids, if I'm, you know, if I pass away years from now, decades or whatever, they can go back to my writing and my texts and all the stuff I've got, playlists, and they would have a pretty good approximation of me. I think that's a better route to go than having a chat bot just, you know, going A plus B equals C, put together an answer and spit it out to you. It's just, I don't think it's good. And I understand what you're saying, too, because, you know, you, there's more information now to gather, like for your kids is what you're saying, than maybe for your parents. I get that totally. Yeah. I know. I think it would be helpful and like it could be really cathartic if, you, if it was able to do it. Like I've heard of people putting in a lot of like... Um, therapy type stuff in there mm-hmm. so you can have like a virtual therapist so I mean there's ways that you could probably incorporate a lot of things that would make it a, a useful experience yeah it's going a very crazy direction where are you listening from uh, Fayetteville nice Fayetteville we appreciate you hey thanks so much for listening yeah very cool it's the morning X Barnes and Leslie and look who just stumbled in the door <laughs> J to the B <laughs> real Jimmy not AI Jimmy Did you enjoy your work last week? It was a good job you did, I heard. 
Uh, it was definitely interesting to listen to. I mean, it wasn't, you know, the technology is not perfected yet. No. I think we'll, we learned that. We'll get into it. I have another surprise for you. How would you, what would you think about coming on Thursday to interview the person that sings uh, this song? Wow. Cheryl? Can you make time in your busy realtor I, schedule? I, I can. She is one of my all-time favorites. She'll be on uh, yes. Thursday morning yeah. at 7.05. Did, did, did you did you know the, you know, I asked her on a date one time. Oh, I know. Don't worry. Don't okay. you worry. Don't worry. Well, you'll have a chance to talk about that later this week. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was yeah no, very would, cool. I was hoping you would come. Oh, that's very cool. So, yeah, JB, you her. weren't nervous about the JB Jimmy Barron AI at all? I was very nervous about it uh, because, you know, when think about it. It's like, think of this. Uh, Barnes was the puppeteer. <laughs> exactly. Right? Well, let, here, let's play a few clips. Okay. If, you, if you missed what happened <laughs> last week, did you hear all of it? Not all of it. I heard mm, a lot of it. It was only on a couple times a yeah. day because I'm still trying to perfect it. But basically, Jimmy, while we were on vacation, I cooked up a Jimmy AI by submitting <laughs> a couple of hours of tapes. <laughs> and the model was crafted. And I didn't have a lot of time to test it because it came in late in the week. So I programmed it up, put it in, and that was that. So some of I did hear there were some problems. Here's one of them. Here's a flashback to last week. Hi, I have an announcement. I am AI Jimmy. I was created by Barnes to fill in while Barnes and Leslie are on exotic vacations. The way this works is Barnes types things into a computer and AI Jimmy communicates them. I have music coming up from the Everly Brothers, the Platters, and Bill Haley and the Comets. Also... The hot red chili peppers. See that? Yeah, it's, there were. But okay. when it's good, I thought it sounded like you, pretty dead on. Well, it is me. I right, mean, but it models you. But when a computer does it, that's right. I was uh, I was impressed again. I, I mentioned this. I mentioned this last week, Leslie Fram. If I were you, I would be very nervous. <laughs> Because well, I'm always nervous around Barnes, but no, did any of your friends here, like, did anybody come up to you and go, oh, heard you on the show last week? Oh, yeah, a lot of people came up and, and heard it and said, you know, was that was that real? I mean, how, that sounded... That of course was, it's real. You know, that was incredible. <laughs> I said, yeah, they, you know. Well, wait, you don't even need to come Thursday to do Cheryl Crow. I'll just use AI Jimmy. There you go. I'll make up a couple. Here's a couple more samples. Let's see. What, I'm not sure what this, they pulled these. Let's see. This is 99X. Whoa. That was Whoa. Neil Diamond, I think. <laughs> Good morning. I, I did I did like putting putting him saying things that weren't really happening. I thought that was kind right. of fun. I am AI Jimmy. Remember, this is me who <laughs> made AI Jimmy to cover for us while we are on vacation this week. Jimmy is my whipping boy. Let's give away a chance at a free pair of tickets to see Counting Counting Crows Friday, August 11th at Amaris Bank Amphitheater. Text the keyword taxi now to 470741999999. See, there were, there were, don't yeah. tag, don't text yeah. right now, by the way. This is not a contest. Right. Um, so, or do were, you need to perfect that a little bit better? Uh, well, I think because there were so many nines, I think it just confused the system. <laughs> I know. I sounded German. Nine, nine, it, nine, kind nine, of. nine. Yeah. But it was very it was fun to listen to, that's for sure. I mean, overall, I thought Leslie, I mean, did you think it here's one last one. I'm not sure what this one is. I'm rooting for you to win. I know you'll do great at whatever you put <laughs> your mind to. Everything is going to turn out fine. I'm sure of it. I can be found at jimmybaron.com. I sell houses without people in them. I am a real tour and a coach of something like that is where you want to go and put on your dance shoes to sell a house. <laughs> what? I think something is wrong. 10 4. Good buddy. This is 99X. It was a little word salad there for a minute, but you know, 
I thought it was a good. I thought it was a very good first, a good first attempt, first run. Yeah, first run. Barnes, I missed a little of the eh, that part of Jimmy. That's the problem is you can't really do emotion with AI. See, then it's never going to work. Sorry, and it I doesn't. Need that, I need to hear my JB. Yeah, eh. ah, well, yeah. yeah. Well, ask him about dogs pooping on his front yard. Well, what happened <laughs> with you? Let's check your. Let's get a social temperature from Jimmy because what what were you ranting about over last weekend? We have a thing in our neighborhood. I live, you know, in Sandy. Springs springs off high point and where a lot of people are always walking and walking their dogs and riding bikes pushing strollers and it's bad enough i don't know if you have this here not that when people let their dogs poop on your lawn or on your sidewalk yeah so now people will take the time to bag it up in a poop bag and then yeah. just leave the poop bag on the sidewalk that's not cool. or the or the it's lawn. lazy. I don't even understand that. Like, what's the mindset there? So, to me, that's even worse, right? Because like, I understand you got your dog out and the dog poops, and oh my gosh, I forgot to bring a bag, or I'm all out of bags. It's an accident. It, it happens. But to actually take the time to bag it and then litter with it, to me, is one step above. Maybe I, they're thinking they did the right thing, but yeah, to leave you, your your dog's poop's not good enough for you to take that bag with you right. to the next can? Right. So, so lazy. Some guy said, well, Rude. you know, maybe they're leaving it there so when they come back on the walk, they'll pick it up on the way back. No, dude, you, you're taking your dog on a walk, right? You, you man up. You sack up and you carry the poop bag with you. That's part yep, of owning a yep, dog, yep. Jeez. right? Yeah, no, you're right. Leave bags all over the place. It's ridiculous. I do like your rants of the week. You have a good show going there on social. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> I, uh, you <laughs> keeping us entertained. Now, are you still like? Is there a chance maybe you have spare time in the summer? You can come back some more. For sure. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Anything else you need to clear off your chest? Because Thursday's going to be a big day now. You're going to come back. Very excited to uh, to talk to Cheryl. Yeah. All right, Is man. this the way we get Jimmy to come back? Is just to have all yeah. his ex-girlfriends on? H- have I said no yet? No. Have I said no? no. Okay. Only okay. the first time when we said, do you want to do the show? Every <laughs> Right. Other than that, uh, you've been all okay. full steam ahead. Uh-huh. And now we taunt you with the beautiful Cheryl Crow, and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm in. I'm here. I'll God, be here. I do love her. <laughs> what's, there, what's there to not love, Okay, right? I'm just telling you right now, I am going to bring up that you asked her on a date uh, yeah. to oh. her for uh. just some validity and just to get it ironed out. Are you saying, Barnes, that back in the day before you were married, like back when we first started the show, there wasn't somebody that maybe you could have had a shot at like who turned out to be really famous well her but i would it was only my fantasy i would not have acted on it like tried to do it because that just can't it can never go well that and dido you got okay but you gotta you gotta what does wayne gretzky say you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take but then you don't you don't think about that maybe your show might come back 20 years later and then they're gonna call you on it did not (laughs) with her did not think about that what is she gonna say Mm -hmm. good i can't wait to find out thursday and she's not you know the only person we ever had on that i asked on a date oh yeah i know know but tracy lords was one of them no i never asked i never asked tracy lords on a date (laughs) no it was was, Who um, was it? Don't you remember the Mary Lou Henner incident? Yes. Yes. That was oh. my favorite. One of my f- the five favorite things of all time that uh, ever happened on our show. She is supposed to be on our show sometime in the next two weeks. Are you serious? Yep. Mary Lou Henner? Oh, he'll Mary come back. Lou Henner. Can, can I be on that show? We'll think about it. We'll think about Mary it. Mary Lou Henner is really going to be on the show? <laughs> yes. They just pitched her. I forgot what it is she's promoting, but something she's doing. This is, I'm telling you, it's a reoccurring theme, Jimmy and people he asked out. Do you remember the whole story? I remember all of it. Yes. Yes. No, we'll, we'll get into okay. it. Okay. Because that aired on Best Of recently where she has that freakish memory where she can right. remember everything at every time. Right. Yeah, right, we'll get right. into it. All right. Good wow. to see you, JB. You too. We'll see you Thursday for Cheryl Crow at 7.05. Awesome. All right. This is the original 99X. 99X, Barnes and Leslie, we are your morning X. Oh, Barnes, I'm going to make you so mad right now. What? what, Sorry, but... Why? Yeah, have you heard this story? Check out this headline. World's first AI radio DJ takes over the airwaves at a Portland FM radio station, Live 95.5. Wasn't that a crap? An AI DJ. Crap. Yes. They're not the first... Well, it says there, the AI Ashley is her name. Do you have a clip of this woman? Yes, it's a it's a real midday host, and then she had to go in and, I guess, talk for hours. 
to produce this. Today I go from just Ashley to AI Ashley. So let's see how close the AI sounds to me. Today I go from just Ashley to AI Ashley. Let's see how close the AI sounds to me. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Hold up. And these guys are, are saying that they're the first ever? They're saying they're the first ever. And I went to their Twitter site. They're getting slammed by fans. Quote, you've totally disrespected the radio profession. You made history for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, and then someone else said, not to mention, you're making radio irrelevant as a medium. Go away. Well, not to mention that they're lying. Oh, it's not live. The first one that did it was 99X Atlanta. Hold on, this is a program director emergency. I knew they put that special button in for a reason. Hang tight. He's supposed to answer quickly. If he doesn't, I'm going to complain. Hey, that, Steve. Hang on a minute. I'm, I'm actually trying to move Will Pendarvis out of my office. What's up? The, this is Steve Craig, ladies and gentlemen, back. Steve Craig back. Hey. 10 to 3, but he's not on yet, but I have this safety buzzer. We have a radio emergency. Oh, no. This radio station in Portland is claiming that they're the first to have an AI DJ. Well, that's BS. Um, we all know yeah. that. So, uh, thank you, Matt. Matt just pulled up a clip. This is from over a month ago. Let me show some evidence. This was over a month ago. Let's go back to when we had Jimmy on to confront AI Jimmy. So I programmed it up, put it in, and that was that. So some of I did hear there were some problems. Here's one of them. Here's a flashback to last week. Hi, I have an announcement. I am AI Jimmy. I was created by Barnes to fill in while Barnes and Leslie are on exotic vacations. The way this works is Barnes types things into a computer and AI Jimmy communicates them. I have music coming up from the Everly Brothers, the Platters, and Bill Haley and the Comets. Also, the hot red chili peppers. See that? Yeah, it's, there were. But okay. when it's good, I thought it sounded like you pretty dead on. Okay, we're back live. There's your first AI DJ ever. That's true. That is weak. What can we do? AI Ashley. Program director Steve. No AI on this station. No, that's my that's my edict. That's my gavel banging. That's not going to happen. But just Thank Jimmy. You. But AI Jimmy's okay because that way, you know, we don't have to actually have him here. That's, that's true. <laughs> I'm kidding. We love Jimmy. Uh, but Steve, if, if you missed the big announcement on Wednesday, Steve Ooh. is back. Are you excited? I'm very excited. You have no idea because as the station launched back uh, uh, six months ago or whenever, uh, I've been sitting here listening and just getting very, very excited about being a part of it. And so I'm glad that it's all come to fruition. I can't wait to start uh, start up all the familiar stuff that we had back in the day. And uh, it's, it's just going to be a blast. We're going to have so yeah. much fun. People need to get on social media and welcome Steve back. Just go to all our 99X sites on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Welcome back, Steve Craig. Thank you very much, guys. It's great. The funny joke is that some days we'll be working and we'll be doing our show, you know, between 6 and 10. And Steve will call both me and Leslie during that time. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Are you guys busy? We're like, dude, you need a hobby. Like, badly. This is it. It was driving Steve crazy. And I bet yes. I can't imagine sitting like that was keeping busy, of course, you know, because there's a there's some family issues that we've been dealing with working a little bit with Angel Flight, which is a, a charity of volunteer pilots I've been working with for about yeah. 25 years now. So keeping busy a little bit, a lot of golf. Uh, Barnes really, really uh, needs to work on his uh, short game because he's a really crappy golfer. Uh, so game. it's been, it's not. <laughs> yes. Not just short. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's it's and it's the nice thing about it is being excited since since the launch and. December, January, uh, it's gone by just like that. It's gone by so quickly because that's what happens when you get old. Now you sit around, you get up early, and you have nothing to do. <laughs> exactly. I cannot wait for the House of Retro Pleasure. Yeah. What are the features that you're bringing back for people that missed the big announcement? Uh, House of Retro Pleasure, which was the original name of the Retroplex. So I thought, hey, we might as well go back to that. And uh, also the Wheel of Ramones will be somewhere therein, I'm sure. Uh, Steve's College of Musical Knowledge, of course. i got to get behind the podium and start handing out diplomas and quizzing people. And there are so many great concerts that are already coming down uh, with the music that 99X has always showcased, the music that we pioneered. Uh, bands that we started and all these 
all these acts, these artists, they want to get involved in 99X. And so we have all these great concert tickets to give away. So that's going to be in uh, in Steve's College of Musical Knowledge. And as you know, Resurrection Sunday will be coming back. Locals only, of course. We have a big, huge stack of live X's we're going to start uh, throwing in again uh, that you haven't heard in 20 plus years. And also new live X's coming up as well with new artists. And we're working on Big Day Out. We're working on the freeloader cards. So it's slowly but surely going to feel a whole lot like the original 99X, which it kind of is. It's, it sounds awesome, and the response from the listeners already has been great, and the interaction has been good, because everybody's been positive. Everybody's going, this is great, this is great, but hey, what about this? Are you going to bring back this particular feature? Are you going to have Resurrection Sunday? Are you going to have Sunday School so we can hear some new music? Blah, blah, blah. So it's all been great, very suggestive, and, and very positive, and we love the interaction that we're getting from the listeners on social. What people didn't know, and you know, I know Leslie knows this, but in your contract... When you worked at the river, where once you had played Freebird one million times, you were supposed to retire, and I know that finally happened. Yes, it did. We're thankful that you're free as a bird, ironically, and that you were available <laughs> uh, to come here. Yes, okay. it was it was such a coincidence, and it was uh, just a, a, a moment in time where the excitement really amped up for me, and I was just chomping at the bit to get back to work. Yeah, you're going from Skinner back to the Smiths. So congratulations, <laughs> Steve Craig. I think you you picked a much better lane, in my opinion. I mean, that's just my opinion, and I'm nobody. But welcome back. <sighs> Such big news. We get into a lot more trouble, uh, FYI, in this era than we did in the previous era. It's very legal. Yes. <laughs> so yes. Get ready for that. All right. The I'm Steve Show that is back. Out. You're finding that <laughs> out. I bet you are. Yay. The Steve Show. The Morning X. X. With Barnes and Leslie. 99X. Nine, nine.